Everybody rolling? Yep. It's All right, so one more thing that I wanted to kind of add in. One of the questions that we get all the time is, is it comfortable and can you sit there all day? That was uh, what I was getting ready to ask you. That was the very next thing. Sure. Like so many people ask how, how comfortable sure. is it? Well, I mean, in its most basic form, you're sitting in a hammock and everybody knows a hammock is comfortable, right? Um, but here's the deal. You are being supported by a piece of webbing and a piece of webbing. Um, imagine you're in a ladder stand all day. You're not going to sit perfectly still all day. You're going to lean onto one side. You're going to lean onto the other side. You're going to have to kind of stand up a little bit. You're getting pressure points. You're going to have to shift. This is no different. I may bring this up two inches so I'm more upright. I may bring it down so I'm sitting like this. I can adjust up or down where I feel this. And so you can move those pressure spots around. So yeah, you might be like this for an hour or two and then you adjust it a little bit. I tend to wear knee pads because I like to sit just like this with one knee against the tree and kind of lean into my bridge. Where do uh, you get those? These, uh, I just bought them off of Amazon. They're, uh, the brand on these is Arcteryx, um, but there's other brands out there. Um, I've even seen a couple of knockoffs that are very, very similar, but under a different name. Okay. That's pretty And slick. they've got a little rubber coating, so I mean, they make no noise on the tree. Mm -hmm. Show them the buckles too. There's no, there's no metal Velcro yep. or anything. It's, it's totally a, silent. No noise. One thing that you absolutely have to have on an all-day sit okay. is uh, our back band. And notice at the bottom of the same pack, rope came out, then the accessory strap, then the back band because that's the order that I'm going to use them in a hunt. We've redesigned this a little bit so that you drop it over your shoulders. Drop it into your carabiner, and then that's going to give you some lumbar support, some back support that you can kind of lean into, which makes a big difference. And again, if I got my knee on the tree, cross my arms across there, I've got this pulling against my back, this crossed in here, and you can sit like this for a long time. Yeah, you can. I mean, for me, I'm such a... I'm just a jittery guy. Like, yeah. I love that I can just, I'm down a little bit, I'm up, I can twist. Yep. I mean, seriously, I, I don't like being perfectly still, and you don't have to be in any setup, but this allows you to really move and really turn. Another I thing. I like that aspect a lot. And I know that you're getting ready to probably explain this, but there's a lot of adjustability in the webbing portion of the saddle. Sure. As well. Yep. And that was one thing that when I got to using them last fall, I was a little confused at like which ones, where do I adjust? Sure. You know, for Everybody's gonna situation. have a, a different size body shape, right? Some people have more mass in different places and you know, whatever else. And so we tried to add some build-in adjustability here. And what this will do is this will allow you to adjust and take up some slack in that seat belt. So it adds more or less comfort to your uh, lower portion as you're doing it. And it's really easy to adjust and it's modular. If you don't want it, these can be removed right uh, from the saddle. Yeah. And so if you want these on there, great. If you don't, take them off. If you're going to use them, cool. If not, it's, you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. That's just, just, we like to be able to offer a lot of options for people so that they can look at all the different ways of doing it. Another way of getting comfortable, this is a good method, but to me, I rarely adjust these, rarely. I'm adjusting like he showed earlier. I'm bringing, I'm bringing my carabiner further down, further up, and that's really where I'm making the big adjustments. That's, where, that's what I started messing with eventually. And yeah. you know, it was, it was a lot of trial and error yep. for me at first, because I didn't know, I didn't realize a lot of this stuff, but I started using that bridge adjustment. Sure. One big thing that will make a big difference, and it's when you think about it this way, it'll start to make a lot of sense. The angle that your tether and bridge make to the tree plays a huge difference in how you're going to feel pressure. So if this angle is really steep, it's going to feel like the saddle's trying to pull up on you, okay. right? Because it's going to pull up your body and out. If that angle is really flat, well, now it's pulling away from you you're gonna feel that pressure more spread out across you. So a lower tether height, a lot of times can make a big difference in comfort for people. Um, and that's where a platform as well, because the platform forces your feet away from the tree. On a ring of steps where you're up here, you naturally induce a steep 
bridge angle. Okay. Whereas on a platform, you're giving yourself a little flatter bridge angle for the same tether height. Where would you set your tether height if you were if you were starting out? Where on your body? I tell everybody chin to forehead. Start in that range, and then you can work your way up and down from there. I wouldn't go higher than your forehead ever, but chin to forehead is a good place to kind of start as you're standing on your platform. So you can see I've got mine right, right in that right. range, and then I try to set my uh, Prusik, my Ropeman, whatever, to the point that where I come down to my knees, I'm just barely above level. Because that's the most comfortable position for me. Some people like it higher, some people like it lower, but I've just learned over the years of being in the tree and doing this, this is where I like to be. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing I noticed when I started using them, especially on those long sets in the rut, was like my foot fatigue <laughs> wasn't near as bad as it was in a tree stand. And I got to think about it, like, well, that makes a lot of sense because that has most of your weight, whereas the tree stand, it's all going straight down onto the platform. One thing I've noticed this year, I've been on the trade show circuit nonstop all year. I get tired just standing on the concrete floor. I go up into the tree and stand in a platform in a saddle to take a break. It's actually, it takes the weight off of my feet. It makes it more comfortable. This is better than standing up on the ground. Yeah. And I'll do a lot of times when you do that move where you put your dumb hand through yep. and I'll put my back to the tree yep. and I'll stand there just like that and, and hunt, you know, sometimes like that. Cause like Ernie said, I rotate, I'll sit, I'll lean. Sometimes I'll go sideways and put my hip against the tree. There's just a thousand ways you can get comfortable in it. Oh, yeah. Now what happens if you're going around sideways to shoot that deer on the back end and you slip off the platform? So great. All right, so <laughs> the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to eat a little bark. And worst case scenario, if I just drop my legs completely off the platform, that's as far as I'm going to go. Push off the tree, put your feet back up. <laughs> In a doomsday event and the zombies are coming, this thing <laughs> breaks, right? It, that's the worst case scenario. This thing totally breaks. That's all that's going to happen. You're just going to swing into the tree. And that thing's not going to break. It's not going to break. <laughs> no, it's, it's not going to break. We've, uh, we've tried to break it, and uh, we've actually had more than one lab broke their equipment trying to break it. You know, if you were to leave this in the woods overnight or something like that, you're more likely to have a squirrel chew your strap right. than you are to have this fail on you. The difference between that and the stand is the footprint of all your gear is just much smaller, and you can get up and down faster. At least I can. And I've had people, right yeah, I've had people argue that say they could probably get up faster in a stand. Maybe they can, and, you know, to each their own. I'm a big, but, I'm a big fan of it because of the sneak ability, right? As yeah. you're moving into your stand, you have, like you said, that footprint so much smaller. When you go under stuff, you don't get that. You don't get hooking. caught on stuff. Yeah. And I think and that's huge. Yeah. Bulk is a big deal. You know, I'm a weight guy. I'm very conscious about weight. Uh, it comes from my ultralight backpacking background when I was doing that in the Rockies, and I was trying to you know, go for a week long trip into the Rockies with toothpick and dental floss. Like you don't want to carry anything. And so we brought that over. Ernie, he doesn't care as much about weight. It doesn't affect him as much. He cares about bulk. So he likes the fact that it all fits in a tiny little tiny package like you were talking about, tight to your body, not catching on limbs and stuff as you're walking through the woods. Yeah, you, you can never bend down low enough to get under that branch you're trying to get past without hooking a normal stand on that branch. And it, it's it sucks it sucks bad it, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. it just does because then, yeah. then so you gotta bad. back up and you're like what did i get hooked on is yeah, it a strap like, is well, it whatever we spooked, we've completely spooked the whole bedding area out yeah. like it's over now yep and i don't want to come off either is that we're bashing tree stands tree stands are great this is a good system too you know yeah. you can you I can make a tree stand work i'm still gonna right. use a tree stand sure. sometimes sure you know if sure. i'm if i'm in a cedar tree that is just full of limbs for example eight feet off the ground i might use a tree stand in that thing so i can just hey, shoot out of a cedar tree you but said it in, best earlier it's a tool right it's it another tool and right. the tree stand can work in some situations this can work better in some situations it's for what you know again the beauty of it is whatever you want right. out of it i will say though like the more we used that thing last fall like it was going to the woods more frequently mm -hmm. all the time just it's, because um, it's lighter it's faster to set up, and what we're doing, that really matters. Sure. You know? I mean, it's, it's, you would never go play golf with one club in your bag. 
Right. There's a situation where certain things work better than others. Yeah. Um, and that's the that's the, always the question that people ask is like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to either hunt on the ground exclusively. I'm going to hunt from a tree stand exclusively. I'm going to hunt from a saddle exclusively. Why limit yourself? It's like if you watch our videos, you see that all of those different things work at different times. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do is just be prepared. Have for all of them yeah. and I'm know so how to use all. I'm that up because we get that all the time, and you don't have to be so dogmatic. No. You can use it when it works and leave it at home when it doesn't. Yeah. But there are certain situations where this 100% unequivocally, I will, I will never change my opinion that this is a better system than anything else on the market. And then, like you brought up that cedar tree, you will never change my mind that a lock-on stand or a ladder stand is the best for that scenario. I would never tell you to do this. But in the right situation, this type of system is just unbeatable. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what about what about folks that say I'm too old for a saddle? Or I, we'd have to introduce you to Mr. Warren Womack. Mr. Warren Womack and Mr. And John, John Eberhardt. Eberhart. They're both pushing 70 or plus, and uh, I mean, John Eberhardt's been hunting out of a saddle since 1981. Uh, won't do anything else. Now his saddle is basically dental floss and toothpicks, like Greg said, <laughs> but that's still his way of doing it. Um, and uh, there's guys that, you know, they're just convinced that's the best way to do it. And um, they like the safety factor because you're using the alignment on the way up. And when you're here, there's no slack in your system. There's nowhere to fall. You know if your stuff is hooked up right because you can kind of feel it. You're like, yep, I'm good and secure. Um, so yeah, I don't think that uh, age is as big a factor as, as maybe some of the mental roadblocks that people have against it. Well, and Mr. Mr. Womack, Warren Womack, he's called the Louisiana legend. He is, yeah, he's, he's the man. Yeah. He's over 70. Is and he on all traditional? Yes, yeah. all yeah. traditional. He's killed more critters than I've probably ever seen in my yeah. life. And he, at 70 some years old, switched over to a saddle system. And if he can do it, anyone can do it. There are guys that, that use our system that are 300 pounds. It right. doesn't matter. If you're willing to, if you see the advantages and you're willing to put in a little bit of effort to figure it out, you can make it work for you. Somebody who's got hesitations. You get somebody who is like, well, that can't be comfortable. That doesn't work or whatever. If you can get them to give you 10 minutes of time and put one on and just play with it at ground level, half of them are like, all right, I get it. You're right, this is awesome. Well, I mean, it goes back to like our whole mission and a lot of our principles that we talk about and lessons that we try to teach people with tactics. It's always keep an open mind, keep an open mind, keep an open mind. Yeah. Yep. Get creative on what it is that you're doing. Because yep. so many people won't harvest deer because they are locked into one way of thinking. They have to be in that tree stand. They don't care if the buck's walking out there at 100 yards. They're not moving from that spot because that's their stand. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, just go over there. Like Ted did in Missouri. Yeah, yeah just perfect go example. Over there. Yeah. You know, and all that comes down to it's not expertise, it's just. You just open. gotta be where the deer is. It's it just seems open so mind. silly, but go to where the, the, the body of the animal is that you're yeah. pursuing. It's the biggest hurdle for anybody that's looking at this as, you know, outer space. It's like, no, it's really not that difficult if you just try it and you all get up mind. there. And, yeah, just being open-minded. I mean, sometimes the specific is just like every hunt that you go into. You just have to have an open mind. You know, things are going to vary, and you got to be adaptable. And the biggest advantage that I always come back to with the saddle that I've seen so far is the efficiency um, of my hunts, because. If you're deer hunting and you're if you're somewhat serious about it, you're going over and over and over again. Maybe you're taking a week's vacation and you're doing nothing but hunting for a week. And you're bouncing around, you're being mobile, and you're going from spot to spot to spot. I just found it was way faster and way easier to go spot to spot with this than with a tree stand. Sure. You know, especially during the rut. Where you, I mean, we, we popped up in a tree. Me and Ted did one morning. We got up there you know, at 15 feet or whatever with the saddles and platforms. We sat for about an hour. I wasn't feeling the spot. We jetted down and we moved locations. And it took us about half as much time as what a tree stand can take. And if you remember a couple years ago, when Eric was filming, when I screwed up like three big bucks in less than a 24 hour period or whatever, every single time was because I was on the way up the tree and I was monkeying around with stuff. I was taking too much time 
to get to my spot, to get set up and to shoot. And that's what I like about that is it's it's cut a bunch of that time out. Yeah. It's time for error in that. In yes. That regard. Yeah. Well, and depending on how close you're getting into stuff too. I mean, if you're sitting up on some buck bed that's you know almost in visual sight, the ability to stay on the back side of the tree during your whole setup yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah. You know, you might be able to climb up and then you're having to reach around like you said and hang that thing over here and then you got to swing around and get on front. I can do my whole setup right here and other than a few inches on either side of the tree, all my movements are gone. I can yeah. do a lot of motion here and not get busted. You know, you get the stand, you do one strap, then you do another strap, and then you got to get the other guys on. Well, I mean, when I'm Jake's on the ground, I got both of them going up, boom, boom, done. And then you slap the tether on, you're done. Like, it's just, I don't know. I mean, I've fast. been able to get in more trees for the uh -huh. most part with it. Yeah. Well, it goes it back to what Ernie easier. said. It's the best analogy ever is that a golfer doesn't carry one club. Yeah. But it's a tool and it can work. It absolutely can work. This is shooting from a tree saddle in less than 60 seconds. Here we have our top shot from behind the tree. Rotate 90 degrees to our strong side shot. Rotate again 90 degrees to our drop shot. And then by pivoting my hips, I can get my weak shot. I can also come around the tree from the back side, hit that weak side shot again, or by standing up and taking my non-bow hand between me and the tree, pivoting on my platform, I've got my weak shot again. That's shooting from a tree saddle in less than 60 seconds. That's 360 degrees around the tree, folks. That's gonna be tough to beat. That's pretty good. That was pretty good. That was good. That's going to be a good one. That's going to get scared the hell out of <laughs> me. They're out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video that we shot today with the guys from Tethered. We learned a lot of more of the specifics and stuff like that, and hopefully you did too. I think that. Once you try the saddle hunting, you'll be pleasantly surprised with how easy it actually is. And those guys do a great job of explaining all the fine details of it. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video. One and done. Nailed it. Boom. Are you here the whole time? No. All right, bail. Come, come back in. So, yeah, kind of get see. out of the way and then follow him follow around him. Yes. Okay. Follow, yeah. him. follow him so then when he comes yeah. back here you can duck back under again <laughs> yeah or you can okay. just slide in or something yeah. I'm rolling. 90 degrees to our strong side shot rotate again 90 degrees to our drop shot and then by pivoting my hips I can get my weak shot that's shooting from a tree saddle in less than 60 seconds <laughs> pretty good that's pretty good that was good that's gonna be a good one that's <laughs>